This podcast is brought to you by sarahraven.com, which is home to everything you need for a truly beautiful and productive garden. You'll also find great and essential gardening kit and stylish, lovely things to have in your house to bring the outside indoors, all inspired by the garden and the house being tied together. There's also plenty of garden inspiration, how-to videos and specialist growing guides. So head over to sarahraven.com today to discover even more. Welcome to Grow Cookie to Range, the podcast with me, Sarah Raven, and Josie Lewis, our head gardener at Perch Hill. And today we're joining you to chat through the jobs that we're doing during August in the garden here and the ones that we would love to nudge you and remind you are we think super important so I'm going to kick off with if you're going away on holiday which a lot of us do tend to do in August make sure to ask a friend or a neighbor or a family member to come and pick over your cut flower patch because if you don't what will happen is that when you get back if it's been hot and dry everything will have run to seed and all the cut and come again plants will have gone over whereas if you point out to your friend or neighbor or family member, that if they cut any flower, any hardy annual or half hardy annual flower, like a cosmos or an antirrhinum or a zinnia or a whatever it is, above a pair of leaves, what happens is that you remove the leader and you promote auxiliary bud formation. And that will mean that when you get back, your garden will still be full of flowers, which is exactly what we want. So the generous gardener has the most flowers. So remember get somebody, if you're not there to pick, to pick for you. And the same is true of your vegetables. You know, don't let them run to seed and get tough and get too big because things like your runner beans, if you keep someone cropping them, they will be lovely, juicy, young and tender when you get back from your holes. So Josie, what is the other thing that you think is key in August in terms of jobs in the garden? Well, we spend a lot of time here in August watering. So as you know, we have so many pots I don't know what we've got up to between three and four hundred this year, which uh, seems yeah. <laughs> seems quite a lot, really, especially when you're watering them. So we water in really hot weeks. Uh, we water every other day, probably. Um, some of the smaller pots might need watering every day. Uh, we try and do this early in the morning as soon as we, as we start. I mean, if you're at home, I would advise doing it late in the evening when it's a lot cooler so the water doesn't evaporate. The gardeners don't seem keen to work through their evenings, so we'll <laughs> we have to do early mornings. And you know the the, the key is to to soak the pots completely. You know if, the, if your water's running straight out of your pot, then that's not getting the the root ball watered. Either the compost has shrunk away from the sides, and that needs packing with new compost. The whole thing might, if it's a reasonable sized pot, it might need rewetting. So fill a, a tub truck with water uh, and put the whole pot in it and when the, the air bubbles stop rising then you'll know that the root ball is fully saturated again yeah yeah and if you're watering big pots uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard us say this so many times water water well go on and do the rest of your pots come back and water the pots again so the first lot of water will soak if you imagine halfway through the pot once you're watering a second time, that will get down to the lower roots and that will keep your, your plants well hydrated, hopefully. Uh, yeah, that, that's mostly watering advice. Okay. Well, the other thing that um, occurred to me this morning as I was walking around the garden is about when to cut the longer sort of rough areas of grass that hopefully will have been full of flowers and sort of knapweeds and oxide daisies or Michaelmas daisies, etc. And so people worry about when they should cut it because, of course, you want to allow the wildflowers like bed straws and all those to have set their seed and drop their seed before you then cut the grass and cut the tops off. And so we tend to do it now. So early August is a good time, any any time through August. And even orchids and yellow rattle will have by then have ripened and dropped their seed. And that's the key thing. So if you're lucky enough to have those two plants, yellow rattles, are critical for reducing the fertility of grass and so allowing wildflowers to then come in as the sward opens up and then things like orchids arrive. And so 
leaving it certainly to the end of July, but ideally to the middle or even end of August, as long as it's not too messy for you, is absolutely ideal. And once you've strimmed or cut on a very high setting your grass, it's not a lawn and just leave the cuttings there for a couple of days to dry. And that's really important because it's then as they dry that they drop their seed into the soil below and then you can rake up the hay and, and remove it. Always, always remove it. Don't just leave it to mulch onto your grass because that will increase fertility and what you're always trying to do is decrease fertility to get more wildflowers going. So rake it up and put it perhaps in the, in the base of hedges or make a grass clipping mirrored with straw compost heap. So you get the nitrogen from the grass clippings mirrored in exact the bulk with some straw, which is carbon rich. So you've got nitrogen carbon balance. And so you get something with aerobic decomposition, which is much quicker than anaerobic. So yeah, um, long grass, wildflower meadows, etc. Now is the time to attend to them. Uh, yeah, and it's a good time to look at your borders as well for, for any gaps. Or if you haven't got gaps, you might be too congested. So are there plants that will need uh, lifting and dividing? If they need that, that doing, you know, if they're early flowering plants, then you do it in autumn. Some of the later flowering plants is, uh, uh, can be done in spring. You know, take photos and, and see where you need to fill gaps. Uh, and if you see gaps appearing, of course, I'd say stick a rose in it. So uh, choose varieties now because the popular ones obviously sell out really quickly. And uh, the yeah, bare roots from November onwards is the, the, the best way to, to fill any gaps in your borders. But of course, I would say that. <laughs> so my final one is actually to do with a rather hated so-called pest which is the earwig. And I think the reasons we tend to be rather fearful of it is it looks a bit like a scorpion. And so with those little pincers, we think it's going to hurt us, but actually it doesn't. And there is no greater eater, or anyway, it's, it's a very, very hungry eater of aphids. And so what we have at the moment in our dahlia beds is a bamboo cane or a stick with an upside down flower pot full of either torn up newspaper or perhaps some straw and the earwigs think that's a dahlia flower and they will make a nest in it. What you then want to do is once or twice a week, just gather that straw or newspaper and put it in a bag and then go into where you've seen that you've got quite a lot of aphid activity. So it might be in your brassica cage, under your kales, which go those really annoying white fly that will look almost like cigarette ash, and spread out either the newspaper or the straw, and you'll see the earwigs will then crawl out. And they will then crawl up the plants and start munching away on the aphids. So it might be tomatoes in your greenhouse, perhaps they've got aphid infestation now, but it's like growing your own organic pest control. So you don't need to buy an Encarsia wasps that gets sent to the post, you can generate it in your own garden. So certainly that's one of the ways that we control pests here very effectively organically at Perchell. Thank you, Josie, for helping list those jobs for August. And I hope that's a nice nudge to encourage you to get out there and enjoy your garden and to do a little bit of light gardening, which is, of course, good for all of us, good for the planet and good for our health. So see you soon. If you've enjoyed this episode of Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, I'd really love it if you reviewed, rated and subscribed on wherever you listen to your podcasts. It'll help new listeners to know that we're here and enable us to keep getting the very best and most interesting guests week after week.